Episode three. Episode three. The best way to drink responsibly is to invite a friend. Yes. It's a, a better experience. It's all about the experience. Keeps so. you from overindulging, yeah. too. <laughs> exactly. This homebrewing challenge features two stylistically different meat makers. They will swap this mead at every step of the process with no information to go on. This is Meat Swap. You gave me honey this time around. I got to, I got to start this. Yes. You gave me two different honeys. I gave you two, uh-huh. Now, can I tell you that the one with the face on it... Yes. This guy... Yep. ...was a bit salty. Okay. Was that... <laughs> do we want... Do I want to spoil the honeys so far? You were very right. That is sea salt honey. Okay. That I'm... is... I found it at Walmart, and it is honey with sea salt. I saved a little bit for you. Yeah. Because I, I was... I wanted to throw a curveball, which is why I put the little smiley face on it. Well, god dang, that's salty. Yep. Well, as you can tell, I used a majority of it. I don't think it's bad. It's definitely um, interesting. <laughs> and I was wondering what you do with it. So. Well, that, I can spoil it for you. That was our back sweetening, honey. Well, cannot wait to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you gave this to me, and I honestly, I'm, I, to be very frank with you, do not mm. remember much about the original tasting. Oh, you don't? Um, there's a, a interesting tartness to this that I uh, yeah I couldn't pinpoint and I, I do remember now I was like I'm, I'm stuck on a citrusy fruit or a something like that did you ever take a pH on this mm -mm. Ooh, yeah no it's, it's got some 2.76 it, and you said 1050 right I think it was 1090 starting, starting gravity yeah what was the final gravity I never checked because I tasted it and it tasted done yeah um, yeah, 2.76 is where we're at on the pH meter, which is just a shade above lemon juice. It's got that lemon juice, um, not sweet orange, fermented orange. Um, it's so lime. tart. Yeah, and that I honestly I have a hard time hopping over that that to say like I'm getting um, any other prominent yeah. flavor. Yeah, no, it's it tastes it tastes a little bit appley but it it tastes mostly like lemon juice got that acid yeah you also said when you handed it to me you're like i have boxed you in to going a certain path with this mm, one i felt like i had yeah and yeah. so i was like what path is he wanting me to go i don't think i went down the path you wanted okay so i have a guess about what you did mm -hmm. based on the flavor that arrived not that long ago, like two weeks ago, yeah, you gave pretty, it to me. It's still pretty fresh in my mind. You uh, give that to me. Mm -hmm. I did this. It's got a very soft nose on it. Mm -hmm. It's pillowy and round and a bit... Vastly different. A bit marshmallowy. Okay. There's a bit of a... I can get that, yeah. A bit of a vanilla edge to it. This is way more palatable than this right now. This was like getting knocked in the face and yeah. this was like you had a pillow around your, your fist there were two paths that i was guessing okay one was that you just hit it with some vanilla the other was that you had brought it back up a little bit with like some meadow foam honey or something mm. to like give it a new honey yeah. character to revitalize it but mm. it's got such a perfumey softness to it mm -hmm. i couldn't say confidently what you had done. Interesting. I wondered if, based off the nose only, you, you would catch what I did to it. I, I felt like what I did mellowed it out, brought it down oh, yeah. and, and made it more more palatable, and I was happy with that. I, I don't think I went too crazy with my choices, but I feel like I, I was hopefully setting you up to do whatever. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like you took a rough piece of wood and you went over it with a fine yeah. grit until you got it down to nice, nice, no, no hard edges. These always, I love how the last one, the laundry list of things went from like, it, it just kept going and going. What's like a, one of the uh, places you go where you get a huge... Oh yeah, um, like CVS? Yeah, like a CVS receipt of <laughs> things. But No, it's not like that. Clarity wise, very, I mean, you, you cleared it up. I don't know if you intentionally did this, but... I cold crashed it. Okay, that probably... It, it, it cleared in a matter of days. A Apple juice still has that, um, I, I get like a campfire-y kind of hmm. roastiness. From my, from this point, this mm -hmm. secondary, I get like a campfire. I don't know what it is, but my nose is like. I, I mean, I don't get that at all. No, <laughs> it's weird though, because it's like a uh, 
juicy. I mean, get, I, I get apple juice. I get malic acidy kind of profile mm -hmm. to it, but it still has a lot of those deep notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like this. I do feel. I don't think you put fruit in it. I think you maybe hit it with some some juice of some type. Some oh, type. I think so. It's very good though. I will say I. I really like this actually. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's very complex. It's pretty good. I got a bunch of bottles down there too, so you're welcome. Well, we got take some home. We got to keep some for the future, so we can open this up. <laughs> no, I, I think this one maybe turned out the best final product of the three we've yep. done so far. I think collaboratively, like we we actually we came to a point where we were um, not the last ones weren't enhancing one another, mm -hmm. but I think these enhanced each other the best. I I definitely feel like we were building towards mm -hmm. something. All right, you ready to find out what happened to this? Yes. Let's go back to the beginning of time. Rewind. I gave you two honeys. I gave you this, whatever brand it was, sea salt, and I gave you two pounds of alpha alpha blossom honey. I felt like that that the one honey, the, the neutral honey, was very neutral. Yeah. Rich, good quality honey. Couldn't have told you what it was, but mm -hmm. it was just a good rich honey, which is interesting. I just bought a 60 pound pail of alfalfa because I loved my last pail so much. That's good, it's a great honey. <laughs> well, it's just, it's so versatile. Mm -hmm. You can do so much with it. We talked through it a little bit, trying to figure out what would be a good flavor profile that would go with salt. Mm -hmm. And what I decided to do was try and like do a little bit of an apple pie riff. Mm, interesting. So in primary. Oh, interesting. <laughs> In primary, yes. we had a bunch of pear chips, dried out pears. It had started its life as four pounds of pears, and then I turned it into pear chips, and then I never brewed with them. Yeah. And so I decided to, to brew with them. So I put all of those and uh, most of a can of apple juice concentrate okay. into the Mr. Beer okay. with all of that honey, Yep. and uh, topped it up with water, and I pitched Philly sour yeast into it. It's got the, um, I'm not gonna say that the aggressive acidity is from Philly Sour, because I don't think that's all promotion. I've used Philly Sour and not gotten that same result, is what I'm saying. Oh, buddy. <laughs> okay, so you, apple juice, pear chips, honey. Honey, water, Philly Sour yeast. Let that ferment all the way out. Yep. And then I gave it to you. Okay, so I got it. Tasted it, went through that, my own little debacle of what the heck do I do with it now? Because um, I was very confused. Uh, honestly, I couldn't I couldn't pick out a lot of apple or pear. Yeah. I'm just uh, blindsided by Tart. the, the tartness yeah. of it. And so that's hard to get over. That. We've <laughs> experienced that in, yeah. a, in another yeah. video in our, in, with us. Uh -huh. The tart mead is hard to get over the, to dive into. It is. So I th was like, okay, I know for a fact that I think uh, to, to set, uh, sand around the edges of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a little powdered wine tannin will help out. So okay. I, I went ahead and pitched some in, and not necessarily for clarity, but to help maybe just to see what it would do. So I did, okay. I think a quarter teaspoon or something, not a huge amount, and about half of an ounce of sarsaparilla. Oh, okay. And just dried, just put it right on top. Not like, not, not in a uh, brew bag to drop to the bottom or anything. Okay. Just sat on top, it sat for like, Actually, I was very stressed about it because it sat for 24 hours. I started it at like a 9, 9 p.m. Might, set up, might have sat for 36. But I was like, I've been tasting it and it was very strong. Very, very strong coming out. And I fell asleep one night. I woke up and I was like, oh crap. I bet that this is way too sarsaparilla-y. There are some interesting notes. I've never played with sarsaparilla. There's some interesting notes. Marshmallow. I get um, campfire smokiness to it. Of course, that's like the main thing for root beer. And so mm -hmm. whenever I did it, I was like, he's gonna suss out. I get like a winter green. Interesting. That's yeah. And but I don't get I don't get winter green in here. Mm -hmm. I, you're right. There's like a like a warm spice. That's mm -hmm. what I thought that was in the vanilla family. Uh, interesting. That's all I did. I put about a half an ounce, okay. which, or a considerable amount, to be fair, mm -hmm. of sarsaparilla. I was just dry hopping it for a short amount. Mm -hmm. And you? For one, I back sweetened. I stabilized and back sweetened. I wanted to add a little color to this, and I wanted to add hibiscus to it for color. Mm, okay. Found that I was not, I was out of hibiscus, so I couldn't do that. So I boiled and steeped some rose hips for about an hour. 
and then yeah. strained the tea from the rose hips in here, hoping I'd pick up some kind of color off of it. It's a little bit. It's darker, but it's not red, and I wanted it to be red. Yeah. So I think it, it gave it a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a citrusy punch. Yeah. I didn't really get much of it out of there, but I back sweetened it, stabilized it. Okay. I'm oh, the one other thing I did, I added just like the smallest touch of cinnamon extract. Oh, okay. Just a, just a, it was like an eighth of a teaspoon. You get just, on the nose. Yeah. I just wanted to warm it up a little bit and uh, cold crashed it and here we are. I don't, it's interesting that the apple character is popping more after the rose hip addition mm. to me because well, this is way more fruity. It's a significant amount of sugar in here. It's true, yeah, you get a dry, you get a dry fruit flavor with a dry meat. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that definitely is helping. I don't know that I haven't used rose hips enough. A heavy, heavy back sweetening helped to flip the script yeah. on that tartness. You still get some the base values of each, which I think is important mm -hmm. here. You haven't we haven't changed the base. It still has a little bit of tartness to it, hidden within the sweetness. The saltiness is not as prominent to me in no, here. It doesn't which is wallop nice. you. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course, when you just drink the or taste the honey, it's gonna be in your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, I, I agree with you. This is the the best one so far of us stacking on top of each other. What are we gonna do next? I don't think this will be our pinnacle one. It's very good, mm -hmm. but I do think we're getting to the point where we understand how to really stack, <laughs> which is the point of the show. Yeah. And, and not everybody gets to do this. So I wanna highlight that this is um, kind of a unique experience. If you get to do this with a friend, for whatever reason, bounce a mead back and forth. I feel like this is the most valuable thing for me, not only developing my palate, mm -hmm. but also to really be critical in how to make a better mead um, with zero knowledge. Yeah. Of course, if you had told me you had done some of these things, then my brain would have probably calculated mm. to do different things. Mm -hmm. But instead, you have to kind of run forward with a question mark and say, what am I gonna do? And then you just do yeah. it. Yeah, and I think this one is, of, of all the collabs we've done, all the shows I've done on the channel, this one is the one that has challenged me the most to think about how flavors play with each other mm -hmm. because I don't necessarily know the flavor that I'm working with. I know what I taste and what I sense, but I have no idea what it is. And I yeah. really have to kind of like dial in on that experience and then kind of peruse through the space <laughs> yeah. and try and think about what could work with that, which I think is super fun. Go make some mead and then uh, share it with your friends. At the end of the day, you drinking your own stuff is very important, but the world of mead expands because you take it out there, not because we put some YouTube video out in the ether. <laughs> All right, until next time. Cheers. Happy brewing. Cheers.